532. I'm calling this meeting to order if Jessica will record the attendance. Um, Article two is the approval of the agenda. If you haven't had a chance to look at that agenda, if you will do so now, and I'll take a motion to approve. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion approved. Article three, approval of the minutes of the April 16th meeting. Again, if you have not had a chance to look at them, if you would do so now, and I'll take a motion to approve the minutes. Make a motion to approve the minutes. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion approved. Article four, acknowledge visitors wishing to speak regarding any agenda or non-agenda items. There's are no um, participants that have Anyone come in mic? person. Uh, it is no no one's on. All right. Article five, financial report. Jade, I'm supposing that you're going to go <laughs> through this with us. I can. Yes. <clears throat> um. So the re what you have, it's. I mean, I don't know if it's really a report, but it's just really a year to date <laughs> business or on um, budget. Um, an expense uh, revenue and expense summary for the DDA for this fiscal year. Um, I apologize that it printed. I don't know if you guys printed it or if you're looking at it online, but it prints it printed funny. I'll fix that for next month. But really what this is, it shows the first column is the 2024 budget that was approved. The second column is the year-to-date balance within those columns. And then what the third column is what's left and what's available. So um really probably what we want to look at is the third column over knowing just kind of tracking our expenses and our revenues clearly there's a large um, section that's missing out of the tax collection because that's actually doesn't come until the winter taxes so we won't see that reflective there and then i just want to make note that something was um, we have a it came to my attention that we actually pay for a website for the dda which we're looking into um, it's not active anymore so we're looking at that and that $400 that's coming out of the miscellaneous line item, we did a little way with all miscellaneous line items in the budget this year, just as a budgetary practice. I don't, I don't really think that that looks too well to the public. So we incorporated all of those costs into other line items. However, this one came in and was automatically um, deducted. So we're working um, on that particular website and actually getting that fee taken away. So we don't have that charge anymore in the future. And we're going to move that $400 back to an appropriate line item. So as you look at this today, I mean, it's still early in the year. There hasn't been a lot of expenses for the DDA, um, but just wanted to show you that this will be in your packets moving forward. And as we see more activity, um, I'll put the invoices in, in other appropriate documents behind it that show what the expenses are. And you're going to do that monthly yes. for each meeting? Okay, mm -hmm. yep. great. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. And and I don't know if there's any questions or if you want more information, let me know. But um, I wanted to get this, make sure and get this in there so you guys could at least see um, the format that we use. We had to generate this report out of a new software oh. program that we have. And it's a normal Last calendar question? year? Like Yes. Yep. Okay, I didn't know we do know. operate on a regular calendar, January through December. Okay. So just it, make sure I'm reading this correctly. We are running this year at deficit based upon all the, the investments we made, but we're still sitting at a ending balance of close to $2.5 million Correct. when we close out everything. Yes. So we're still running with a, with really a strong base. Yep. Yes. Any other questions? Oh. Thank you for this, Jay. Yep. Uh, Article six, hotel ordinance update. So I wanted to take a moment and update you on some an activity that the board <clears throat> of trustees had me working on for months with our attorney, with our Kent County Sheriff's Office, and with our fire department. Um, there was a pretty significant um, issue with the hotels. Um, Cascade has 14 hotels. Um, and some of the activities that were occurring at these hotels were, were there was activity that was going on that just was not something you would want to see in the businesses or in Cascade Township. Um, Scott can attest to this, having a business that's right by the hotels as well. 
I won't go into all of the graphic details or the, the packet. I, I want to encourage you to look at our board packet if you want to look at the detailed report. It's about 145 pages long wow. of data that we collected from sheriffs, runs, and what kind of activities were happening. We did Google reviews, which actually produced pictures of the inside of some of the hotels and their hotel rooms, which actually what that actually did is brought to light that we not only had just illegal activity happening, but we actually had some building code and fire safety code violations within the hotels themselves. So it kind of, it, it snowballed into even more. And um, I just forgot the last section, the last piece I wanted to say. The stats were pretty shocking, like the number. I, yeah. I would never have guessed. <clears throat> yeah, there were 1,600 calls over the course of 24 months to the hotels. Now, you're going to have calls to the hotels. That's just a given. But on average, I would say the hotels are about 40 to 50 calls per hotel. We had about five offenders that were well over 400 calls to those hotels. For two and years. For wow. two years. Mm -hmm. And these weren't for Mayberry-like infractions, like yeah. the one with jaywalking. Like, these were serious offenses. Mm -hmm. and like, once a murder. Like, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That was close to Scott's. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it accounted for about 11% of all calls. All calls for the, both the sheriff's office and the fire department, 11% went to the hotels. Um, what I included in the packet for you today, though, that I did do was this overview. I did this and presented this to the board at one of the um, board meetings. This kind of gives a real high level overview of the um, ordinance. But what this basically does is it, it's going to require all licenses or all hotels to license through the township by October, the end of October, this calendar year. And then going forward, they will have to renew that license on an annual basis. And with that license will become a inspection of the facility to make sure that um, they are in the, in, up to compliance. That's gonna be um, a inspection by the sheriff's office to make sure that there's no illegal housing and that we don't have any um, uh, long-term stays that aren't permitted because these are not long-term stay hotels. And then also to make sure that we are in compliance or they're in compliance with all of the building code, um, the international building code as well. Um, these locally owned hotels are these nat national chain hotels? Oh, both. both. Yeah, um, a lot of them are franchise owned, and then like the Sheridan was recently bought out, and that is actually corporate owned. I think the, I think the Drury is also corporate owned. Yeah, I, I, I believe you're Sheridan correct. Sheridan is Marriott now. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's part of the Marriott brand. Um, Something that came to light after this approval that we never even thought of, and it came up at the, we actually have a quarterly meeting with the school district, ourselves, Ada and um, Grand Rapids Township, in regard, just to get an update on what's happening in the schools. They heard about this and they were so thrilled to see this enacted because they actually have families that are living in these hotels. And once they overstay their welcome in one, they are moving to another hotel. So they're having to work with their transportation department. They're actually busing these kids to the schools from the hotels. And we did not know that. We, that just came out last week. I And that's something we see in the morning when I, we're baking. Really? A, a bus will pull up to the Red Roof Inn and pick up their kids. Yeah. Um, which kind of takes you back a bit. Yeah. Is that the Forest Hills School District? Because that's what it falls yes. under, right? Forest Hills. I believe so. Oh, yep. Yeah, because that's who we were meeting with as Forest Hills schools. So I just wanted to give you guys a brief overview. The ordinance is long, but it's putting in some, you know, clear regulations, some clear expectations, some clear um, protocol that the hotels are supposed to follow. And um, so uh, it, it's going to be an interesting next six to 12 months as we start to enforce this and educate the hotels on what this process is going to be. We're not the only community out there that has a hotel licensing ordinance. Um, Battle Creek has one, Grand Rapids has one. It's not real, it, it's not, doesn't have a lot of teeth. And then there was one, a couple of them on the east side of the state as well that the attorneys found that used as an example. So we didn't create the ordinance from scratch. We used the kind of the basis of other communities that have already implemented this. Um, so we'll see what this what this can do. And then actually we shut a hotel down, not because of the ordinance, but over the weekend, we shut them down because they were not in compliance with their fire suppression 
and they were warned twice and they actually had a hotel full of people and we made them move, move all of their guests to other hotels. Mm -hmm. oh. So, so we definitely have, it, it's kind of either, you know, about it or you don't know about it, but it's, it's definitely an issue in cascade that we're, we're tackling, mm -hmm. but because it's in the DDA too, I thought it was very appropriate to, to educate, oh, yeah. you know, you guys and update you yeah. on what the board has, has us out. Um, well, and we, we've had conversations in the past, just under the general safety and security umbrella um, about what, and of course, Scott has been sort of probably too close, more closer than he'd like to be to, to the subject um, about, so we, we knew that there were things that were going on. Um, we just had never had a conversation about, there's actually something that can be done about it. I mean, right. there were things that were done at that time, things like talk to the hotel ownership or manage, management and said, can you stop accepting cash for, you yeah. know, fees in, you know, that they have to have a credit card, they have to have a, a license or some form of identification, mm -hmm. like pretty much every hotel does. But I guess some of the hotels weren't, and that was making it easier for some of these people to stay. So right. yep. this is great. I, yeah. I mean, I'm biased because I, I'm kind of in that hot spot and I've witnessed a lot from police lines being strewn all around our parking lot because of a murder or because of crime scene investigation or what have you. But just a, a, I would say from a DDA perspective, I think in that area of the DDA, that is the number one challenge that we're facing. Mm -hmm. Um, in making sure that our associates are are safe, but also that you may you are able to attract and keep those associates. Um, but I think if we address the hotspot of, of the crime, that's going to help those businesses in that area. And also you think of corporations that have invested like um, North Point Bank um, that hired a personal security guard um, to you know go around their parking lot because of concerns and things that happen. So I, I just a public thank you that that we took this on and Jay, just thank you because you're you're new as a same manager and you have only so many things you can tackle immediately when you walk through the door. So this is going to help that section of the DDA and in the community immensely. And just it's great to have that engagement. And this was not an easy task. Yeah. And it's not over yet, right? right? I mean, it's now being implemented. So a sincere thank you. Yeah. No, it was it was something that we had to tackle and because the longer we waited, the worse it was getting. And, you know, Scott came and talked at one of the board meetings as well and shared his stories. And um, so it, it, it it's going to take everybody to, to help make it successful. But I would imagine it would discourage more hotels coming in, too, which would be a good right. thing. And I think. I think it's great to have strong hotels in the area mm -hmm. and you know that we're very fortunate the Drury is a solid hotel mm -hmm. the Sheridan is very very hard, very hard. Mm -hmm. and then I think there's a few bad actors that yeah, you know, are are creating a big the, problem uh, um it shouldn't deter any good actors from coming out yeah because I think yeah that's I should say that yeah uh, correct and it, and it may change ownership the, these uh, these ordinances may change yeah. The ordinate hands on ownership that may change their behavior. Yeah. It's great. Thanks, Jay. Yep. So I know win. it wasn't really an actionable item, but I thought it was a very important item to, to discuss. Yeah. Appreciate just it. Putting Thank it. Wonderful. Yep. So um Article Seven bylaw discussion. Do we have a draft to look at? Yes, it was in the packet. I'm scrolling. It's underneath the slides right after. I think it's on slide 31. Uh -huh. Page 31. So these, um, Jessica helped um, me as well put these together. These are clearly draft. We've we've searched some other um, DDAs. I mean, there's no sense in reinventing the wheel, right? Other communities have DDAs, so we might as well use some others and um, tweak them for Cascades purposes. And so what I would suggest we do, we can either go through this or if it makes more sense, and I do apologize that the back went all a little bit late, I was on vacation and we just, so it didn't get out before the weekend, but maybe there's um, an opportunity for us to either review this now, or if we want to review it over the course of the next couple of weeks, send me some comments and we can update this draft 
um, or if there's any questions, we can come prepared to the next meeting to actually spend more time on this. But I, I put it on here just so that we can have the discussion and you guys can tell me how you'd like to proceed. So I'm assuming maybe everybody would like some time to have to go through it. And if you have any comments or suggestions, ads to send those to yeah. you, Jade. Yeah. And then just to give a little historical um, piece on this too. The interesting part is the DDA has been in existence for decades and there's no bylaws. We we have searched high and low and there's no adopt, there's no bylaws that have ever been adopted by the DDA. So to give some structure and to give some validity to what we're doing, it would really and help to make sure that we're we're doing what we're supposed to do. Bylaws are, are pretty important. Yeah. So um that's why this has actually come up in the in the last few months that we should probably take a look at this. Yeah. So but yes, that suggestion would be would be okay. Good. And and either um I mean, I think we can just do an update next month's meeting. I, I mean, we've gone how many years without them? So I think if we take the time and um, then come back on it next sure. next yep. month. Yep, and we can okay. we can actually you know we'll leave it on the agenda, leave it as a as an item, and we can have more discussion at yeah. that point. Mm -hmm. but I mean, that'll give you time for everybody to get their comments into you if you want to do uh, you know an updated draft, and we can look at it. Yep, and hopefully be done yep. yeah they're Absolutely. easy easy to find online i looked up a bunch and yeah yeah this is similar yeah but you might find a couple nuggets here and there right. that yeah right and if you see those comments and we want to add something or we want if something else is too detailed let me know we can tweak all that um i would suggest though just email me directly along with jessica um, but to make sure that we don't violate open meetings act just do that one-on-one -on -one. don't do it as a group yeah that way we don't get ourselves in trouble right we don't want the attorneys to show up and go, yeah. you can't do that. That's a good point. <laughs> it's short and sweet, so it won't take long. Like, right. This isn't yeah. 20 pages. Yeah. I don't know if one thing's helpful, like where th there's probably some gray areas of where it's the total township board versus the DDA. That's where I was kind of, I'm not sure. On the oh. Calls, but... And then the lanes that yeah, each the lanes. group is responsible yeah. for. Yeah. Like, for instance, when the sidewalks came to us, mm -hmm. I think everyone was a little flat footed here, but I think it was also everyone in the city was mm -hmm. because we hadn't had to address that in the past. But knowing what we're responsible for versus other boards, yeah, kind yeah. of what you're hitting on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and so I appreciate you guys going through the growing pains with myself as we fix some of this, um, because the other thing that we are working on is, and once we get this implemented, and I know Michelle, you, you've talked about this in the past, is an onboarding kit that actually shows what the purpose and intent of every board and commission is. Mm -hmm. So when we do onboard a new commissioner or a DDA member, right. you're like, oh, this is what I'm supposed to do. Right. Nothing like that exists. So we're working on putting that together for every board and commission that we have. And then each one will have a certain section that's, that's specific to this particular mm -hmm. board or authority. Mm -hmm. So we're coming that that's still coming. So that will also aid in defining where those lanes are at and then oh, perfect, you know, making sure that we're working within the confines of what yeah. we're supposed to be doing. And I mean those things some things change too. Yeah, sure. You know, so or they collaborate or partner. Right. Right. It's a, it can cross over between, you know, us and I don't know, the pathways committee yep. or, you know, um, or the parks or the planning or the, um, and some, there have been some things that the board has said, um, we're going to pass that on to the DDA. Yes. So like the transit thing. So they right. can change over time. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, at least we'll have sort of yeah. a base of yeah. what what's sort of our core responsibility. Oh, absolutely. hundred percent. hundred percent. Okay. Uh, any other questions about the bylaw? No. Well, okay. Just thank you. I think this is a great addition, um, in the, and it's been needed. Yeah, I think it'll help. Um, okay, Article Eight, topic timeline. And I know there's an updated example or draft of, or maybe final. Yeah, this is. Um, I don't know, Jessica. Do you want to? I, didn't get a lot of time to 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 look at this when I get back, but I know this is something we've been continuing to tweak and add on and make sure that we have something that um, we can work on moving forward. So Jessica's yeah. continued to tweak this, but is this in its final draft? Whatever changes they want to have. Okay. 
This is the same with the ideas from last night. You said you wanted a list with the colors to show um, what areas they affected. And I think this shows that you don't do much at all in like the 20th Street corridor interchange, almost everything is the village. Um, but as you have additional things you want to do or want added to this, let me know and I can update it. Andrea suggested I put the picture at the bottom of where the different parts of the DDA are. She said this is like kind of a draft form. It's something we used to use, but she thought it would be useful for you guys to be able to see mm -hmm. um, a picture. And she said that she's working on getting an updated image. I think it'll look great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's clear. And I see this as sort of a living, breathing tool For sure. that it's going to be constantly, you know, it's flexible. And we just, in fact, um, I wondered if we could have it somewhere that is digital that can just, can it can just continue to be updated. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you would own it, but maybe it's something that we can actually have access to to look at. We wouldn't do any editing on, obviously, yeah. but um, yeah, I think we can. Um, the township we're looking at um, going with some different community. Like I don't know if anyone's heard of SharePoint, uh, but that's kind of we're going to be going to SharePoint with our documents, which actually we then can accommodate that. I, we can still share it out for yeah. you for sure, so we can yeah. send that back out when we get back to that. Um, okay. Yep, that'll work. The, the only thing I saw that I think could be beneficial, especially for the interchange area, maybe part of Centennial Park, is just having a crime update okay. uh, mm. a couple times a year. If that's, we found that it's such a big deal up mm -hmm. by where I'm at, it don't, that's the only way we're going to get visibility to it. Do we have right. a problem, less of a problem, or do we have new hotspots? Once you change the hotspot, do you get a new one? And do you, I mean, we've talked about having yeah. Deputy DA come to another meeting, and we've yeah. talked about in earlier meetings doing that a couple times a year. Yeah, is we that, couldn't get him to this meeting, so the plan is to get him to our July, our uh, June meeting. Yeah. yeah, it just needs to be on, on here. This yep. I just think yeah. on there, and it's yeah. the, the timing of it. And if I think it's. Hmm? What borders would you want that at? I, I think it can be Q1 or Q3 or Q2 and Q4, like space them out where there's six, yeah. there's a good three about, month gap between them. Q2 and Q4, then we hit uh, end of the year, as long as we're fiscal and, mm -hmm. you know, or it matches our fiscal. I kind of like it Q2 and Q4 also, because it kind of like, I feel like summer could be a really busy time, busy time for crime. So like gearing up for it and then how'd it go? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Good we can do that. So I will get with Omar and Kate and let them know that we're going to add this and that'll just be ongoing. And then we'll make sure we get them scheduled for either the May and June meeting, May or June, and then the November, December meeting, probably November because December could be, depending on how it falls around the holiday and our meeting may or may not happen. So I'm just kind of thinking ahead that we'll have them here at yeah. this point. And my yeah. feedback would be with the crime update is to make it almost like a, is it up or is it down versus like generally like, well, we're starting to see break-ins the cars or are on an uptick. So please lock your doors more like, okay, so this area was, uh, was traffic light red because of these are huge hotspots. We had this many incidents three months later, it became a yellow because we had less incidents. Mm -hmm. Or and these are the factors that we yeah. think contributed to it. Just it, something that just it's it's almost formally we're looking at kind of the same thing each time. Mm -hmm. Yep. Maybe that's like that. We mentioned a scorecard last time. Yep. Could that be there's goals, projects, review, like Q2 and Q4? Mm -hmm. But maybe there's a different scorecard for each area, village, centennial park, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's different what, things. Get you something in a packet every single meeting that had that scorecard. Was that discussed last time? A scorecard for the crime? Yeah. I think a scorecard, like in general, like in general. How, how are we doing as a whole? DDA? You're talking for like projects that we have, yeah. like what we were talking about last time of like, it, say, what's going on out here, all of a sudden construction came to a halt. Yep. It, it's a red. Red. Okay. And last time it yeah. was a green, or is it still? Oh, a green? yes. You're, yeah. So it's like our key that. objectives of what we need to deliver for the year. Mm -hmm. Use almost like, so what I can green, do, yellow, red. When we get there, I'll talk about 
the staff update right. that I put together yesterday, and maybe I can incorporate that right into that. That has a section that is this. It's called, we call it the scorecard. It'll go through all of our active projects and integrate all of our active areas, and then I can do that uh, green, yellow, red indicator. And then maybe there's general metrics that are like uh, occupancy or whatever they are that we decide mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. go in addition to the projects mm -hmm. yep. overall scoring mm -hmm. ourselves. So it's like a dashboard that we're looking yep. at of the health of the DDA yep. and, like and, and how we're doing as a DDA on our mm -hmm. projects. New businesses attract. Yeah. Whatever. That's a great idea. Oh, he's a new bartender. <laughs> okay. Any other question, discussion on timeline? No, this so, looks great, Jessica. I mean, between the bylaws, Michelle, that you were pushing on and this and Jay, we're, we're gonna, like, this is all awesome stuff. Yeah, and I think the one thing that, I mean, I think I'm always trying to think of like the next best thing. Cause I think what's going to happen when we get with this is we're going to have to then start to break these down. So we've actually already started talking internally about the heritage festival because that's in September. Right. It could be in the end of August. We're still trying to look at that, but we can't just wait till August to plan it. So no. here we are in May. So we've actually already started. So we need to put some backup behind this too, that actually then shows, okay, we need to start now start forming a subcommittee to look at that and then mm -hmm. how it's going to look and take, take shape. So it's a lot, we, we're making progress, but there's still more detail. And we don't have to take six meetings to decide on Christmas tree lights. <laughs> no, no, we won't. <laughs> this this no. kind of holds us accountable to like discuss uh -huh. once, make a decision. Right. Uh -huh. I agree. Master plan might uh, influence the theme. <laughs> That's something. <laughs> so right. <laughs> okay. Uh, Article nine. Village stakeholder meeting recap. Oh, that's on me, except that. Here's a nice packet that we jump put together, which is great. Um, so, I mean, I'll just give a verbal. So we had a meeting um, last month and uh, with a, a, a wide array of people, both from the township as well as um, we had Hannah Berry from Lions and Rabbits. So we talked about, um, we had, um, uh, Tim Ross from the right place. We had a developer real estate, Max. Max Benedict. Benedict. Mm -hmm. um, he's also, he's a uh, resident as well. Yeah. Um, so we had a really good uh, sort of cross section of people and started out really kind of doing a, a little bit of a visioning section. And so OHM was leading this and um, did a visioning session session that was really about high level elements, nothing specific, but visual images that would help sort of articulate some of the things that, that we all thought were important to incorporate in this redevelopment of, you know, the village. And, um, and so we had some interesting discussion around that. And then we broke into small groups to do that and then sort of brought that all back together. OHM documented all of that. And, and out of that was already coming some real sort of high level priorities on some things that um, gave them some really good direction then on to go back to their office and come up with uh, the, the proposals, which they're gonna come up with three, mm -hmm. correct? Yep. And we talked about some elements that should be in each one of those three proposals that they were sort of um, in terms like incremental in terms of how, how maybe the project could be phased. Um, they probably will have different elements in each one of them. Some of them, it may go from, you know, simple to really complex in those three. So it'll give, I think it'll give us, the township, some really good um, options to look at. And like any other project like this, probably there will be things out of each one that then get sort of um, coagulated into what might be a final option um, to move forward. Yes, yeah. I think that's probably that, obvious, that, much better. But yeah, they, that's a, that's a really good summary. Details. The one person, the 
one entity that we did invite to the stakeholder meeting, which um, at the last minute had to drop out, was actually the owners of the Thornapple Center, where the Fulling Warehouse is, because mm -hmm. they're going to be a pretty intricate yeah. um, component, you know, person to 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 discuss with. So we um, we're going to reach back out to them and kind of get some of their feedback. But we've I, before I even started, I know Grace had had other conversations with them about public-private partnerships and what they could do. They're overparked. They've got a lot of asphalt. So what can we do there? Um, so it was it was an interesting four hours that we yeah. had. Yeah. Um, it was so lots of dialogue um, back and forth. And and I know OHM took took back um, valuable information. So what they did is they put this together, which kind of summarizes what Michelle and I are telling you about in regards to um, what they gathered, um, kind of just shows you the process of what they did. Um, they did uh, also tell us, well, they also showed us some of our existing statistics. So mm -hmm. whether that's population growth, you know, house values, our infrastructure, like they spent a couple of months collecting all kinds of data from us as staff in regards to utility data and just demographics and things like that. To, and then, so along with that, and then what we had, to, what the group had to give in the, the feedback then they're taking that back and forth with the concepts, which are supposed to be back this summer. So I know that's kind of a, I don't have a date, but in the next couple of months, we should have those concepts to start really hammering through. So I thought it was a really worthwhile, I mean, yeah, I, it was I enjoy productive. stuff like that. Sometimes I like to sit back and kind of, I, you know, look at what everybody else has. And um, so that was good. For the zoning things, do they do, like, I know other places have done, if it's a, the bottom floor of a building, it should be retail mm -hmm. or something like that. Mm -hmm. And upstairs can be mops. Mm -hmm. So yep. I don't know so, if they recommend that kind of thing. Yeah, so out of this didn't come any recommendations, but mixed use was absolutely discussed yeah, that day. Lots of um, about that. Okay. Yeah, and in various areas too. Yeah. So uh, you will definitely see mixed use um, proposed in the concepts yeah. in different bottom, um, like yeah. Parking is key because mm -hmm. if you're going to have new things around, it's hard. Right. To, we don't yeah. really have a lot of it. Right. Right. And that's part of the discussion was, okay. And we uh, sort of everybody agreed, yeah, it would be a good thing to do, but understanding where it would fit best in terms of, you know, what does it offer the, the residents of the, or the tenants of that space to be in that location or not be in that location. So we had a lot of discussion around that, which was great. And we will, when they come back with the three concepts, we'll do a special, like, I don't, that meeting was probably going to be a one and done stakeholder meeting because that was where we gathered the input. When they come back with the concepts, that'll come back before you as a board for further discussion. So we'll probably schedule a separate meeting where we'll be able to, because you all have vested interests in the district as a whole, mm -hmm. um, both sitting on this board and your businesses, like your livelihood, um, and some of you live in the district. So it'll be really important for, to get those concepts in front of all of you. And then like the proximity one, does that like, I think the river, right? And then do they help navigate things? Like, let's say, I'm just, not that I'm making it up, but the automotive place across from Tuffy, mm -hmm. if we said, hey, could we find them another space, mm -hmm. give them tax, whatever, mm -hmm. and get something different in there that leverages yeah. the property? So yeah. it, I, I can only say this from, I think there's a couple of different ways we can tackle those and it'll become pretty evident once we see the concepts. Once businesses see what the concepts are and all of a sudden they see, oh, well, this is my auto shop, but now it looks like it's a, um, a three-story, you know, mixed-use place on the river. Well, how, how do they, where do they expect me to go? Mm -hmm. It just opens up the dialogue and it gets people mm -hmm. thinking and all of a sudden things just start happening. But then it does also open up opportunity for the township to sit down and talk with these business owners and say, okay, is there a better suited place for you to yeah. go? So, and then if nothing ever comes of it, then they they stay there. I mean, it, we can't force somebody. And just just so you have some historical context, because some of the people on the board are new and haven't heard this discussion before. There has been conversation with Verhey okay. about, mm -hmm. you know, would he be willing? And and Al has said, yeah, I would be willing. I just need to make sure that my shop is in a location where my employees can get to it easily, because you know this is my family. So the, he's very open. So we knew that that was always an option then that, you know, mm -hmm. he was willing to have that dialogue. Yeah. Okay. That's awesome. And one of the things that I don't know if we actually, if, I, I'm pretty sure this was in the contract with OHM, 
um, another community I was at where they did this, once the board and the DDA kind of finalized on a concept, like 98% there, they actually did a public meeting with anybody in the DDA that wanted to come, that could come and take a look at it and did more like feedback from those businesses. Mm -hmm. So it's not so much like you approve it, the board approves it, and then somebody sees it that owns a business is like, what are you doing with me? It's like, no, we're part of the planning process. So, you know, what's your, what's your Surprise. feedback? Surprise. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. The piece good. side, it's really encouraging to me is that we've kind of taken down our firewall and included people like Canterbury, um, the, the right place mm -hmm. where it's, mm -hmm. when you start doing that, good things start to happen. When you try to go it alone on everything, mm -hmm. that's where you, you struggle and you see pictures and you never quite get to where you need to be. So it's exciting to see all those different stakeholders involved because those are some of the key people in the community that know how to yeah. get things done and know what's going on in other parts of the community too. So that was awesome to see. I mean, different skill sets and the sum of those strengths are what actually can make these things happen. Mm -hmm. And you connections. Know. It's all yeah. about relationships. That, yeah. So that's what yeah. it's made West Michigan stand out yeah. from other areas of the country. Yeah. Yeah. And we're just now tapping into that, right. which is great. You know, so. That brings up another like connection. So we've got some pretty prominent people that technically live in Cascade. Yeah. Would they be willing to partner and and we've had that discussion too yeah. about yeah. well do they actually live in Ada? No, they actually live in Cascade. Oh well, then that would be a good conversation yeah. to have, or or including them as that broader mm -hmm. and other foundations. Yeah. That's the thing. Right, like, there's so many inputs, and in West Michigan's been the model for public and private money, and we as a community here in Cascade Township we haven't overly leveraged that working model here because right. right. it usually it's, you know, the, there'll be a base amount of money put forth to the public uh, by the public. And then the private money comes in and makes it over the top, something mm -hmm. special. And that's, what's made all these projects locally yeah. work. Yeah. And I think we're, we're positioned for it now. Yeah. Agreed. And I think like the incentives that we're working on drafting, and kind of revitalizing, I think that all plays into it. I think that's a springboard for, I think like you said, if one person does it and it just kind of snowballs, it's like, I don't want to be the odd person now mm -hmm. not having done it. I think most people, especially small businesses, take quite a bit of pride in what they do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Kudos to Rishi who came in after we made this discussion and committed to OHM to do this. He met with Andrea and I because we're going to use his building as a model in the concept because he wants to make sure i don't want to speak for you but our conversation was wonderful because he's like yeah let's let's work on my building what could that look like in this process and that kind of will also help set that tone that we have business buy-in in the area great. but you guys were the incubator for that right like it wouldn't have pushed me forward unless it wasn't so i think yeah. it's good and that, I think we're starting to sell a vision as opposed to just like, here it is, to yeah. your point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if one of own buys into it, then you know that it's, it's valid. Yeah, it's great. Uh, okay, um, Article 10, Stonehouse Update and Financing. Yes. <laughs> that financing piece is interesting. Yeah. Um, so the board, so I, you guys are all aware of the stone house on Orange Avenue. Can you help me like, where is the stone house? And I was maybe completely, um, right by, I know yeah. it's on Orange. I was yeah. behind Ricci, by it. behind Ricci, just yeah. to, yep. two house, what, second house behind yeah. Ricci. Yeah. Cause there's second a really company line. right behind the store. And I think it's, because yeah. I went down, down it, I think I was looking right. I'm like, yeah, it's on the left. <laughs> I'm missing the stone house. What? I, I don't even think I want that. <laughs> yeah um let me pull it up i always show that way to go home oh you do oh oh that, that, yes cascade. so then you don't like have to turn cascade and right to turn i always go down orange mm -hmm. and then up, going up. so here i will pull up this and i don't have the system on i apologize oh no, it's fine now that this is sorry there's a lot of land the slow one. One. houses and it might you know what's the history it's like uh, the, there was where did i read that history on the stone house was it in one of our Packets or no? There was a history thing that I read about it. It it 
think it's I get right it right now. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, was, I was thinking yeah, was, of this huge building, and building not, no, it's to the right. Stone Although you're not seeing, oh, is that the stone yeah. house on it, though? Things. Me, oh, yeah. Me. I've seen it a million times. I go right Earlier. by it, like, and every day. What they said was yeah. that there's not a piece, back, piece back back in that look at the elevation, there's a piece yeah. on the wow. side that was not okay. part of the original house that was a I looked at it when it was advertised for sale. I saw it right away, and I looked at the stone. Yeah. 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 So when it, it went up for sale and looking at the the uh, village and looking at the property that that sits on, it's really pretty. And then once we started working on this concept, that property is actually two large lots and it backs up to the detention pond and the um, Cascade Roadhouse. And then that access road that kind of it's behind is that behind, that's not behind you, is it? Mm -hmm. no. okay. But it goes into those apart. Like I thought they were Found condos, houses. but yeah. they're like yeah, houses. yeah, yeah. I through them all the time to get my, to find right. place. So it's kind of um, it's kind of an interesting development. I guess I'll just use that word because nothing is really cohesive back there, and it's kind of a, a mess. <laughs> um, so and then because of us looking at in the board in the in the township's desire to preserve history and look at green space, they're like, we need to consider purchasing that. Yeah. So we did went to them, and we actually ended up. I closed on it last week. We take possession in 30 days from Friday. So um, we actually went, when we went through the house, everything is still intact. All the structure, all of those stones are actually pulled from the river back in the late 1800s. Yeah. And really? we found an old historical picture, um, which I will send to all of you without the additions on the side, but the house is completely intact as it was 120 years ago. Yeah. So it's pretty, and it's, there's a picture, there's nothing on this hill, but this house, it's amazing. That's cool. Um, so I was working with the board and um, we they needed to act quickly because we didn't want it. There was actually quite a bit of interest in it. So we had our attorneys, our, our law firm act on our behalf. I didn't go in there myself and they did accept our cash offer. So hmm. with the board, we don't know, and this is where the DDA comes in because we don't know what to do with it, but we wanted to make sure that it didn't just get sold, redeveloped. You know, it's not on the national um um list for historic um as a historical building which i think it could qualify so i think we want to pursue that yeah. but then it could be used um as something as a public use space as we create this village i did consult with ohm and said do you guys think this is a good idea overwhelmingly all four of them that we're working with like that is a key property to the mm -hmm. to the project just because of where it sits how it sits and then being it's kind of kitty corner from the museum right behind the church so acted on it went pretty quickly and so now we do own it and now we have to figure out what we want to do with it at the end of the day it could be sold but at, right now it's 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 it's, an asset. it's the township it's our asset and so now we've got to figure out what to do with it um when i talked to the board um it was actually obviously funded out of general fund but we were approaching the dda with the, the fund balance that you have if the dda would fund the purchase of the, the building. What's the acreage on it? Oh, two? I want it, not quite. I think it's just an acre. Let me look. That's not in our packet, right? It is not. This no. kind of came up last it minute because we were waiting for the environmental to come back. We're waiting for, and then, um, and actually, the, the disclosure wasn't even. They didn't even know who was buying it until uh, we got closer to the closing because yeah. we didn't want to disclose. Yeah. One orange, but that's so the consultant might say restore it back to original or take off. Maybe I don't know. I, has a lot been done on the inside of the building so it's gone through a couple different businesses one right. was a real estate agent um, right. one was an attorney there for an attorney while. and then the most recent owner owned cascade metal or cascade die they're oh. they're over off of m6 and but he's getting ready to retire oh okay. he lives on this side of the township and he wanted an office closer okay away. so he just bought this and oh, so okay. Everything inside, um, it had, does have some walls that were put up, but it's been, it's it's spotless. And actually, if we want, we can have our meeting there next month. Um, Is so it? Can all see, or do a tour. Water or? Water and sewer. 
Oh yeah, it's it's to You're fully functional. It's nice. Oh, oh it's it beautiful. Is. It's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Oh, super so, nice. And, oh. super great and the view. landscaping, you can't see it from the photos, but if you could see the landscaping behind it, I mean, you could actually have small weddings back here. Wow. It is that nice. Did you tour the property? Well, I you were go to church at... there and I was walking out one day uh, across the street and it was for sale. And so I went back and looked at it online and yeah, know, I've always noticed okay. it. But it doesn't even do it justice online. If you yeah. get, if you go up the driveway and look in the back, like you, you could literally have a very small intimate wedding back there. So, I'm just wondering, like, what what does it sort of lend itself to, you know, to have someone use the space for yeah. the near future until there's a ton of property around it. That's what I saw. Yeah, right. I think you good, could do right. you could do small art shows. Events, you could do basically. wine tasting events. You could do dinner parties if well, if you wanted to rent it out, almost like a. Like our, we run out our parks like and our a pavilions. Event center mm -hmm. sort of thing. You absolutely and it would work for that. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, for sure. That sounds so like a good idea. Yeah. One, yeah. One I'm still trying to figure I out the acreage. I'm sorry. I'll get it. <laughs> it is a little off the DVA from a legal perspective. Does it fall within the DV? Um, I believe it falls within the boundaries. Okay. Because I. I will verify because I, I like be, the I shouldn't be asking the idea. I like that feels be nice to have a yeah like it's got the charm of her history. yeah well oh the, the whole Scott you bring up a good point maybe it's the... that's the only thing that I can like right now that could stand in the way that if we do that then so this might be the first property that's not in the like just it's outside in the DDA can we change it to be in the DDA. I don't know. Not that easy. You have to go back. So you have to petition. It, there's a whole process if you want to change the boundaries of a DDA, and you have to petition all of the other taxing jurisdictions and go through an amendment. Um, it's pretty. It's a lengthy process. Um, doesn't mean, but I don't think that that changes how we use it and how the DDA yeah. would function but, in it because it's so close. So close. But, but I also, am going to go back and research that. There might be a way the well, DDA engages where if we think it's a gateway, because yes. there was a discussion That's, of a yes. lead in that if we can't necessarily purchase the property, can we reactivate the property with DDA right. funds to reimagine exactly. it? Exactly. Yes. Because that's what we did when we talked about the bridge. Mm -hmm. that it was an entry point into okay. the GDA district and this could be construed the same kind of property that it's a gateway into the DDA district especially with you know redevelopment and all of that sort of thing I think it would fly I think it would but the question would be can we purchase the property or can we reimagine it like with right. DDA funds, and if you have the if the, you have the funds, I don't think that, and I would have to consult with an attorney. But I don't think you could actually purchase it because I think there's probably some gray area with that. But yeah. I think we right. would have a leg to stand on to reimagine it to right. to activate the DDA right with the property right. Scott, how far off is it? Do you think is it like an acre? I don't know. It's just one. Like when I looked at it, it was just like, man, we're really close. One. I honestly think it's. So, I think it's yeah, one building I off. Think so too. Now that I'm. Is it just the street frontage that is DDA? No, it's it it stops right at. Right behind the Cascade Roadhouse, yeah. behind yeah. Rishi, like, and then the next property. So, yeah. 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 But I just looked it up on Google Maps. You're right. It's literally the next one. I guess yeah. I haven't even went that far back yeah. in 25 years. That's nutty. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, well, because I apologize. I guess I shouldn't even, I jumped the gun. What I think it may do is it sets the table of, man, if we partner with the township, mm -hmm. you guys have purchased the property. Yeah. How do we turn it into something amazing now that we have this group engaged reimagining all of the DDA? Yeah. And they were the ones who really were excited about, in, you know, grab that property. So how does that play into our strategy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like he said early. We probably do a lot of things. I mean, you've got the real estate company, you've got us, you've got Rishi, you've got Cascade Roadhouse. If you could put some type of a little square back there, then you've got that mm -hmm. property. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can picture like little, like winter festivals, yeah. you know, with, yeah. the, and then like every Christmas they sell the Christmas yeah. trees. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're charming. And we had an old house at one of the communities I worked in before and it had, it was 
the historical commission did a great job of that restoring it. And we actually did have private wine parties back there, like wine and food tasting yeah. pairing parties. I mean, with the minute I pulled up the driveway, I'm like, oh, there's so much possibility up here that you can yeah. do, especially because of all the green space. It could yeah. be like the sidewalk, like Cascade assigns us to yeah, well, oversee the reimagination of it. Yeah. I, I, well, and plus we've talked about how do we create that sort of back street mm -hmm off of Cascade Road because it's so busy on Cascade Road and mm -hmm. this falls right into and how all of that gets sort Have of- Have you guys been re into downtown Charlevoix where you take those alleyways Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. But they're they're thoughtfully designed alleyways like that they make the experience in really good. Yeah, 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 exactly. All those businesses behind yep. the alleys. That's those, so- yeah. But yeah. those are all pedestrian ones sold, right? Yes, yeah. yes. Which but is, same I think, idea. awesome. That's because, what, and that's what we've talked about because the whole Cascade Road thing is so dicey. How can we create that pathway so that people can wander through and we feel talk, safe? We, me and you talked about that, at, at like yeah. sort of having it more pedestrian friendly yeah. back in through there. Yeah. Yeah. So and this then if you're doing more with that huge parking lot and turning that somehow more pedestrian, you could walk from... That Those area the does too. Anyway. Yeah. And there's more going on there. Paths that's the paths thing. go back there anyway. Like I walk those paths down into Ada and then Yeah, I think the sidewalks are already there. The yeah. sidewalks yeah. there, yeah. All the paths. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's nice. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're taking the bike path down Thornapple River Drive, you actually have to cut up yep. the mm -hmm. the dirt yep. road yep. and then mm -hmm. take Orange Street yep. down. So it is part of the bike path. Yeah, or you're walking the road. So you kind of gotta go that way. Yeah. You have to. I mean otherwise yeah so i apologize in. i didn't do my due diligence and check the boundaries of the dda as i should have but um as long as there's willingness to work with the township i'll go back and work with grace and yeah the board and I, say yeah i think now it's like how do we leverage now the funds for something amazing yeah there's a park right across the street too mm -hmm. yeah so there's a lot there's already a couple assets right there are you talking about isn't that the churches that's the is churches. it the churches yeah that's okay. what I'm that's, daycare yeah there's no that we, <laughs> but like, there are there are other i think it's a, a great other blocking properties. strategy by the township <laughs> who knows what who would have bought it and done right. something that that's what, right what we're it trying to right. envision yeah, yeah. there <laughs> might be a cause i mean there's one path of just reimagining it into something incredible mm -hmm. or making it going back to what its original state was right. and then reimagining what you do with that. I think the other thing about securing points. it wasn't so much about the house, but it, because it is actually two lots, somebody could have bought it, petitioned it back to split that lot That's and right. then build something else that it right. maybe been. didn't follow the vision that we wanted. It, so it would have been so, those townhouses that are built back there. That's yeah, awesome. right, right. Okay, well, good discussion. Um, I apologize. No, <laughs> no, but I'll go back and work with the attorney no, and Grace and say this. This came up, so I'm glad you asked the question if it was in the boundaries. Yeah, and I'm just um, wondering how we could. There's also money too. Like I think, don't we own one of the river lots? Mm -hmm. That's why it's just that there are other properties that we've bought that are daisy in that... chain. A few, yeah, the concept that it ties. The, I think it's right. great. Yeah, it ties things right. together. Yeah. Right. So and that was whole... another element that OHM has, all of that infrastructure. So yeah. they know those two lots that we have along the river, yeah. plus this. So it'll be interesting to yeah. see what they do with the connectivity. What those destination spots are. Yeah. It's great. Okay. It's all really good. Any other comments, questions? Okay. Uh, staff updates. So <clears throat> this is something that I had mentioned at the last meeting about putting together a short update about things that are happening in the DDA. Um, I don't go into a lot of detail. I kind of bullet pointed just to have conversation and then to answer more questions. I do something like this very similar to the Board of Trustees on every other board meeting week. So I'm just following the same format. Um, so I just have some things here to go over. One um, clearly is the Cascade Village reimagined. Um, we What you see as far as a visual there, that is a sign that is going to be, is it like eight by 20? I it's eight feet by 20 feet long and it's gonna go on the Tuffy parking lot. So people can look at the website or snap the QR code. And what it's gonna do is take them to a landing page. I put the page on the um, uh, on the update. If you click on that, it takes you right to the page that's gonna be on our website. So everything is gonna be there in regards to anything happening in the village. We've got Tuffy on there, Stone School. We have the sidewalk project. 
we have the bridge, um, the concept plan, the master plan, the rezoning. And there's seven or eight things that we have listed on there. So um, take a look at that. And then we're going to continue to update that as new information comes up. And I'm working on adding a little explanation at the top for what the overall idea is. Yeah. So that website that we gave you, we haven't promoted it anywhere. So we kind of, I mean, it's live, but it's not like you have to really dig to find it. Once it actually goes live, then we'll be able to, once we get that detail, but just to kind of show you where we're at and um, what's going on. Do we have any verbiage around, say, Tuffy's of, hey, you know, bear with us. We're, yep. we're reimagining the space. We want to make yep. sure we want to get it right versus rush it. Yep. And it, we've got in there, if if it's not in there, we'll have it in there about the environmental. Yep. Um, I just got the first report yeah. back yesterday. There's asbestos in one of the yeah. restrooms. Yeah. Um, I don't have the ground contamination back yet. So I'm waiting on that. But I'm working with the environmental um, yeah. engineers on that. So it's a brownfield site. Mm -hmm. Could very well be. Sure, it will be. Is the doctor's know. office historic? Like it looks like a. a old I haven't. Cabin. Just, I I don't know that yet. I'm not sure. And it would be interesting to know the history. It's one of those questions of you want to know, but it's maybe you don't want to know. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just kind of putting that out there. It looks kind of cool. <laughs> unless, unless OHM can figure out a really <laughs> clever way of incorporating yeah. it into this yeah. question. questions yeah. might be better. Yeah. <laughs> right. I was thinking those things in a park like you see in Chicago or it's a wine bar. Right. Yeah. Well, and seriously, I mean, it might be able to be mm -hmm. Chris, incorporated. That, my very first day when I got a tour and we yeah. went down there, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm like, why are we not using this for wine nights or a beer yeah. garden or something with live music along yeah. the river? Like, yeah, so there could be some good stuff. Okay. Yeah. Um, the next item was a sidewalk project. If you've driven Old Twenty Eight or driven Twenty Eighth Street, you've seen that they've they're moving like gangbusters. They should actually be, I think they were pouring cement today yeah. or tomorrow, and then um, they should be cleaned up and offsite by Wednesday or by Friday. Yeah, I mean they've poured cement in certain sections yep. already. Yeah, they've so kind of been setting it up, yeah. so they're and they're moved quick. The, yeah. The latest I think was on Twenty Eighth Street today. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because yeah. they had it down to one. Hiring. Which company was it? Oh, uh, let me go back to the. the it was one, the middle one, the most expensive one. Let me look. It was in the DDA packet. Was it two two meetings ago? I think. So I think we lost the. Okay. So the least. There was yeah. It was the um, the lowest bid, but I do believe I'm positive that our engineer has worked with them in the past. Yeah. That had. I mean, um, Recommend they were yeah. like the lowest bid, yeah. but one of the strongest yeah. bidders. He was comfortable. Yeah, like he was comfortable years. working with them for sure. So no, I'll, I'll look moving up. right along. That's they, all yeah. I know. It's like yeah, it's gone. Associations road to um, they, they were out in front of our building. They can yeah, in one day. They it's like they're really that's really nice to hear because I actually had another business across the street from you wanting us to pay him for lost um, sales that day. Really? Mm -hmm. so. One day. Lost sales? Yeah. Really? Whatever. Yeah. I, yeah. The uh, one thing I'd say about the bridge, like, I know it probably costs millions to bury all the electric, but if we can only afford to do it at one spot, it's at that bridge. Like, they can they can move or put the wires under the bridge. I don't know if you look at that when you drive over it, but that's it's really ugly. And if that's going to be a focal point, I would hope that's in the plan to hide the overhead power lines. Are you talking about on the Cascade Road bridge? Yeah. I'll have to look. I'll have to look at the plans that were engineered. Um, most of the engineering was done before I got here. I don't know if it was bearing the utilities or not. Okay, but I think there's a future discussion if we want to activate that bridge. Just that one spot, because that's going to be a picturesque. Yeah. Spot. Yeah, I, I mean, think if you look at it, drive by it. It's like I think there's can be the overhead discussion. utility. Yeah, yeah. Well, and it may it may come up as a big part of the whole lighting discussion because that's been a big piece of that bridge is lighting. Yeah, and what's going to be done and how that looks and so. And OHM is actually working on the, yeah. they're actually helping with the design of the lighting so that it's cohesive and works into the concept plan. 
Yeah. It was um, Epic Excavating is who the contractor was. Um, Friendship Park, as you can see when you came in today, moving right along ahead of schedule on it's budget. On. And it looks yeah. like every day it looks even better and better. Yeah. It's driving me nuts that we can't mow the grass yet down by 28th Street because or Cascade Road. Yeah. I'm sorry, 28th Street because of the they're doing the irrigation. Right. But I just talked to Melanie today. I'm like, when can we get those flags down and get that mowed? <laughs> <So, laughs> but man, they I think are. Everybody understands. though. at first I yeah. saw it, and I was like, oh, they can't mow it right now. Yeah, but if you get a chance, even just walk up close to, oh, it's it's going to be really nice. I really saw it today, yeah. and it looked really good. So, um, there is a grand opening, um, which will, you guys will be getting a formal invitation sure. to as you guys contributed yeah. to the the project Saturday, the 29th of June at 11 o'clock. It'll sure. be here at the. Um, uh, at the pavilion it's there what um we just briefly talked about the pedestrian bridge we had a pre-construction meeting just last week That's eric exciting. attended that um the bids were open on the 21st um actually i take this back the the bid opening for the 21st which was today was on the pedestrian part of it but the actual um the structural part of the bridge that was already awarded okay. but you can see here that work is going to get started here shortly and be wrapped up um by by november the whole thing oh good but i said the fact that we're pushing to get it done before school starts is going to yes. be huge yeah. for the businesses yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. um and then Jessica, put at your desk or at your seats um, something about the Independence Day parade, uh, Independence Day activities. But there is a parade starting at nine o'clock um, this year. One thing that's different than in the past is that we are asking for registration. They never asked for registration before. People just showed up. So to better <laughs> just pulled up and organize ourselves and make sure that everybody understands the proper route. Time. So <laughs> yeah, right. see, Jessica, they're laughing. <laughs> <laughs> it, it it worked but i totally get why you're doing it yeah so yeah. and if someone shows up and they don't register it's, it's not going to turn them away but we're just yeah. trying to change sure. i so get it. it makes yeah. perfect sense yeah. and then i wanted to update you guys on the metro cruise um, that they did come to the board um, for a special event permit um, for their annual metro cruise warm-up which will be on august 22nd from four to eight um at uh I always forget the name of the, the complex where the folding warehouse is in that complex. Yeah. And then when we talk to them, because their owners are much more, they, they transferred ownership a few years ago and they're much more involved now. So now they're actually going to do what's called a pit stop event on the day of the cruise in the same parking lot. So again, trying to attract more people to the district, to the village. So hopefully, you know, people traverse and do more than just look at cars, but they actually visit the, the stores that are, that are there. And that'll be from 12 to 7 on um, the 24th. And Saturday. it can still be called the Metro Cruise? Yes, because we actually met with the actual owners. The, the, the so, people that own the... Mm -hmm. Yep, his name is Brandon. Um, he's been in to meet with us a couple of times. I'm working on it with Madison. And, um, but yeah, he's... Okay. So they did... Right. And when he left, I told him that the pavilion was going to be ready to go yeah. on that weekend. And he wasn't real excited about doing anything else in Cascade or on on 28th Street, but he called me when he got home and he goes, is that really going to be available? I'm like, yeah, and I, it's hooked up and ready for sound. Like, so I'm waiting to hear back. He might bring in a band to do something. Could you imagine classic cars up on the hill by the library mm -hmm. and then a band or something going on that same it's weekend? It's like so. the bookend of the event, right? Right. For the Metro Cruise. Right. So he was pretty, uh, he was pretty geeked about that after he saw it. So, good. so yeah, so good stuff. And I didn't put it in my staff report, but I think with all of these things happening, one of the things that we're going to start really looking at is how do we brand the DDA mm -hmm. so that it actually has mm -hmm. a, like, mm -hmm. def, you know, someone can know who the Cascade DDA is. Mm -hmm. So um, looking at what that process should be look should look like. That'll be good. Yeah. So. Any other questions on staff updates? No. Any new businesses or any businesses that are shuttering or anything that we're aware so of? So one of something that's coming before the planning commission, it's been in the planning in our office for a while, really trying to work with them is um, they're wanting to put another car dealership on oh. Cascade Road on 28th Street. 
There is a office complex right next to the new Subaru dealership. Yeah. It has the three very aged office buildings. Um, Fox Motors has come to the township wanting to put in a Kia dealership. It's part of a PUD. Um, PUDs have been handled interestingly in the township in the past as mm -hmm. far as community benefit and what they give back to the community. So it went before the planning commission on Monday, last night, and um, was met with some resistance. So they've it was it was very preliminary. They haven't seen any preliminary site plan, but it was more con concept and how can we make this happen? So more to come on that, but that's probably the biggest news from a development standpoint, which that's gonna be over a quarter of a mile of car dealerships if that actually ends up coming so in. What's the biggest, con what are the biggest concerns uh, and what could be the positives? Um, some of the curious. concerns are the, so that also, some of the concerns are actually behind where that dealership is. Mm -hmm. If you drive, there's this access road that goes all the way from Kraft and kind of eat, or I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah and it goes Kraft. up behind Walmart and then kind of jig jogs. There's no consistency. There's no, um, that would just continue. So we would need to figure out how we have some controls there because it's not actually a road. It's mm -hmm. a, it's a cross access. Mm -hmm. So we don't have any cross access agreements with the other businesses. So we have to create mm -hmm. that. So making this the first one will absolutely be a challenge. Um, and some that of the road is not maintained either. Right. It's because big, like mm -hmm. one of the meetings I said, could we please make sure both. And Steve actually brought up, there's also not good traffic control right. along there. It's, yeah, then, we went back through the development agreements, Andrew and I did. There was never any stipulation that it had to occur. They literally looked at it by parcel by parcel with yeah. blinders on. So the connectivity and the cross access was not really looked into. So we're looking at how we can correct that. I would say some of our biggest challenges are administratively than anything. Yeah, and then just is that what the is that what the township wants is another dealership. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, would, the, would Fox look to move their Kia dealership that's in Kentwood to that location? I'm not sure. I didn't. I didn't. And then the question is, what would go into that Kentwood so, location? Right. What happens in a deal like that? I'm not familiar with government, but Fox, we know that who owns Fox around here. It's challenging. We know what Cascade wants. I mean, that's that's. You know, I'm with you. I asked the same question. So I'm I'm looking at where I'm looking at this from a couple different lenses. This a quid pro quo. I don't mean to suggest that, but I'm just saying. You know, I don't know if we want to be known for uh, the car dealership of Grand Rapids Lane here in Cascade, but at the same time, mm -hmm. we do have a Cascade Village that we. Yeah, I think that's where PUDs can be used to a used advantageously for a community because with PUDs you really want to get a community benefit out of that. Mm -hmm. well, and you've already got them leveraged with Subaru and they've got their two lots and they also, I think, own the Porsche mm -hmm. and Audi lots. So if you combine all of them, it's like, so you are a major part of our community right. now. So everything we talked about tonight, you know, is there an opportunity to have some of this? Because a lot of this, a lot of what we talked about with the concept and with, Things that are going to happen in the village are going to be put back on the developers because or the business owners because that I mean we can't force them but when they want to do an improvement that's going to be on their dime but the township to to you know to have skin in the game we need to come up with a way to implement some of the stuff that the township controls on the township property maybe there's an opportunity for some collaboration there so i i your comment is not lost and it's been something that i've been talking about thank you but that's probably the biggest business that we know of as of right now. I mean, that's um, a substantial thing. I mean, if anything, it is, it's a hodgepodge of businesses in that space right now. Yeah. It's, there's 20 businesses there, 20 small yeah. businesses. So, yeah. you know, one of the questions we're asking is, okay, what happens to those displaced right. businesses? And then is there an opportunity to work with them as a township and be like, okay, where can we find, we don't want them to leave. Yeah. Right. I don't know. So, I go to one of them every month and like I go to a chiropractor okay. every month. They don't know where they're going. They haven't found space yet. See, and that that's my concern because the people that own the businesses don't own the property. Right. So okay. the landlord they're is the one that's negotiating. And that's, and that's one owner for those three buildings that are on I that believe property. it's one owner one for owner. all three buildings. Yeah. I think it's two parcels, but I think it's one owner. One owner. Okay. Mm -hmm. And do we yeah. have a say as a DDA or no? But they're already looking like they 
as far as I know, yeah. they've already been told because they've like, heard. No, I think they've, they've been already told. been told. Oh, it's because we haven't. Nothing's been approved at the township level as of yet. So, so like we, that, but that tells me that the, been told. That, that the owner wants to sell that property, right? I mean, if if the tenants have been told, that means the owner probably wants to sell the property, mm -hmm. and whoever comes with the best offer, <laughs> right. Well, it, 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 there there are not many other properties that people can go to right now. I mean, even because of interest okay. rates being so high, there isn't okay. development of a lot of new spaces. Or so, vacancies. Yeah, there, there aren't. Because I, I can promise you that they're, they're looking at the condition of those, they're probably not paying market run. No. And if they were to move somewhere into Cascade, it would cost it'd be them considerably a lot more. more. Yeah. Like you're closer to thirty dollars a square foot. Yeah. Whereas I guarantee you they're probably below ten where they are. But yeah. to put it in perspective, agree. like for us, when we were looking at spaces in Cascade and then also in Granville, I would get a deck of like 30, 40 to a hundred locations. Uh -huh. Um, I just recently was looking at property and I had three options. Now, again, to fit wow. square footage and everything, but that's that's actually the story across yeah, the United yeah. States right yeah, now, sure. that we went from COVID where there was all these vacancies yeah. and opportunity, and even before COVID, to because interest rates were low and there was development of new spaces constantly in the pipeline. Right now, it's there isn't much, yeah. and I don't think there is... There isn't much yeah. open space in our DDA right now. No, I think some of the... And I don't have the, the the vacancy rate, but I know that there's office space available yeah. in yep. Centennial Park. That's uh, what I was going to say. And some there are offices in there, but there's also some retail or at least you know consumer driven businesses that are in there. That there is, and there's some open lots, I think. But other than that, but no one's going to yeah. develop them, I don't think. So, do we have a say as a DDA in what happens there, or no? Is it just kind of we deal with it once it gets approved from no the it's it's really a it, it's really a planning and zoning planning. um issue if it meets the zoning if they come in and meet all the requirements um I mean, it's, okay if if this is going to become a car dealership if they, we can't do anything about that can we at least make them design a really well designed aesthetic mm -hmm. building that doesn't look like those tilt-up panels that they keep yeah. on. And so Andrew and I talked about that too, about, you know, again, we're, we're kind of pushing the envelope on standards and yeah. asking for the best. That would be helpful. Um, and then, and not even just like the building standards, but the site standards. So yeah. I know they want to sell cars and you want to see the cars, but yeah, you know, there's no berms on Cascade Road. No. You've got, um, you know, outside Steve's location, or no, I guess it's right on the street. But you know where you pull into Taco Bell, there used to be like an entryway, and now there's that big utility box, that's, and you have no idea how many people I see that actually try and pull in there thinking yeah. that's a drive. Yeah, whole time. <laughs> I, I, one of the first questions I asked about it twice. Why is this here? here? So you know, just making sure that what we're looking at is the whole entire package and not just like Taco, Taco Bell. Bell. Yeah, like this little, and there's the a lot better. better. <laughs> like that's that's in, I think. And I, you can, you can see there used to be an entrance yeah. there, and they said, well, just put up a fence, and we're going to move the entrance right. to be here and so we'll that you can access. The box there, the utility box. So you can access Taco like Bell and Freddy's forward. at the same time. And Well, and yeah, if we start weird. having, you know, some landscape standards so that instead of a, a car dealership that has nothing but asphalt, but they have some landscape islands that are, mm. you know, incorporated in there, yeah. that will help. It, it, or like if there's only car uh, if there's only car dealerships are we really going to be bringing people into our village or are they going to like stop i think that's that what's coming down yeah and i i think that's your point is not lost because i think that's why when we started to go through this master plan when i started looking at it and then andrew came on board i'm like we need to start looking at like you've got i don't we can't really do much about 28th street but then we've got that transition area and then yeah. you've got the village. And I think, you know, this dealership kind of falls into that 28th street where, yeah. you know, I'm not really sure what else you're going to do down that way. But as soon as you get just past like down by DW, I mean, that's where you really start to make that villagey feel and then transition into what we've got. So it's one of the challenges. I'm hoping this concept can help us answer some of that. Yeah. And I, I think there is some upside where people are coming in to get their car vehicle serviced. Um, people are coming in to purchase vehicles you're going to drive. 
additional people to your area. So we I think there's our, there's pros there's mm -hmm. pros and cons. But, but I think that's going to be down here. I, that's square. that's why I would agree of saying yeah. you're going to if we are able to develop a really good like downtown where there's restaurants and right. mm -hmm. commerce right. and kind of that that boat that feel. transition area all the way down into the I, village. I that, think that kind of is the motivation. The if I I, I don't know anything about car dealerships, but what do you think the motivation is along there? It's is our population growth up in this southeast side? I, I honestly don't know. I, mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Um, I, like, I it's think it's clothing. access. I think it's yeah. because it's That's close to the at. expressway. It's easy on, easy off for people to come from other parts of the city to and get it, here. It is actually it's, easier when you get off to come east than yeah. it is to go west. Oh, yeah. exactly. All you exactly. traffic, it was 30, at the time when we made the decision to put our bakery there, 35,000 vehicles a day go yeah. by our bakery. Right. Wow. And that number could have gone up, could right. have gone down, but even if it went down, that's still a large volume. And to have that access point from I-96 that you yeah. can draw from Nap on down, and then M6, you can bring people in from the growing area from Caledonia. Yeah. It's a really awesome access point. And, and there's a lot of Kias on the road. I mean, there's probably a lot of people out here in Cascade that would love to have the dealership right there to take their car to be serviced and all of that sort of thing. I've thought about that a lot with all the dealerships. And I'm like, well, you know what? If you own any one of these brands of cars and you, you know, it's new and you go into the dealership to have them serviced, it's pretty convenient. Mm -hmm. right. We need, I don't disagree. That we do. <laughs> That we do. But what, what, you know, we, so the conversation has always been because there is a distinction we have between yes. village. We the, have one about to eat. The village and then well, 20, but the that's, 20 that's a question for the stone house if you turn it into an incubator or yeah. something like right. that. Like there's, if, a that, lot is, of if things. that is our desire, then I think we have to create the platform to get and, us there. And we, so that's one of the things that came up in the stakeholder meeting with OHM. They got, they understand clearly what everybody, what we've heard from residents, what we've talked about in these meetings, what other committees have talked about in their meetings is what we want the village to provide as a lifestyle and environment kind of experiential place. It's restaurants, it's cultural kinds of things it's you know retail that's nice and boutique-y and you know all of those things that everybody kind of wants in their little community so a great liquor store <laughs> so wine yeah. shop so all i have of to make things. a concession i uh strayed with the enemy a little bit and bought tickets to the ada dda open house thing with my wife and that's friends. a good thing Underbound. very nice was it <laughs> and so, so you went from place to place you bought tickets yes you went to place to place yes. you saw the stores yes they did their spiel they do a good job we of went it. to the restaurants yep had their food and um they they really do a good restaurant. job of it we don't we're not here to no. tear everything down we're not here <laughs> oh we will we went to Ricci's and drank a bunch of wine <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and uh no but it was very nice right it's down the road it's, it's something for us to aspire yeah. yes, to that yes, we can yes. do the same kind of thing because that's what helps all of the business owners. It does right? and at the end of the day, we, the we would probably would want to sit and eat by the river versus eat yes. down by twenty eight Street <laughs> yeah. to the Porsche dealer. So, <laughs> so, I mean, for so, so <laughs> let's let's say that that was a big topic of conversation in the stakeholder mm -hmm. meeting. Yeah, okay. it's like how does we, how does the river get energized and how do we create engagement and use that as a true river walk kind of That's place do we have two properties now on the river besides we, Tuffy? yeah so we own we own the doctor's office was, and we own so, puppies. No, but I thought we owned another one that was a bike shop or something. No, we own on the other side. We own a couple of properties, yeah, but is. they're not contiguous. They're like further down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. but they're still on the river. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. But they're not connected. Correct. No, they're just like residential lots, right? Right. Yeah. No, I, I thought we bought like right next to the bike shop. I thought we bought a vacant 
I'll it's stand. a couple doors down, it's I think, a couple from doors the bike down. shop. Yeah. yeah, but it is, right? Huh? It is a couple doors down. Yeah, it is. Yes. So we yeah. did buy that, right? Yeah, we yes. did. Yeah, yep. there's two. There's no house in it. It's just vacant. Right. Uh, yeah, I down? think. Well, yeah. It, no, I think they're a vacant there's, lots. There's, yeah. There's something on that lot, There's isn't one there? vacant lot, though, that we have, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But, so, you know, if we, all the things that have come up in conversation about what could happen. And I, I think there's a really strong desire, push, pull, whatever, to create if we can't, you know, in order to get from one side of Cascade Road to the other along the riverfront, if it can't be above at street level, how do we look at getting it below along underneath the bridge and create that really great so it what and what that does is it doesn't really matter if the properties that we own are not connected because what does it do it ho hopefully it connects people to the businesses that are along there right if it if it's fitting but then what are those destination points look like as you know you're walking along that sort of true river walk kind of thing at least for a period you know a, and, a section yeah. and, and and then how does that connect to the other things that we're talking about the stone house and that sort of promenade that's behind all those businesses so you're not trying to navigate cascade road and that makes a truly nice experience walking by there so you're going to want a nice rear entrance to your space reaching redesign we talked about it yeah. we talked about it yeah. talked about it yeah yeah it's in his hands <laughs> <laughs> um okay for the sake of time i'm going to go on to is there any other we talked about new businesses businesses going out i haven't seen any vacant or properties that are not um they started building the attorney building and it passed through the uh yes whatever so and the yeah, dominoes is still there which is good news Domino's there. That, that, that seems like be got a six month be life activated into a space that that can be on oh business? yes that's or... gonna be a new gym the champs yeah. yep yeah, yeah it looks nice yeah. i forgot about that one that one i think that what got gym? approved a couple champs it's a it's a chain at their national um i don't know how many they have over this way though but they they've kind of been taking over those big box um, stores like that. So where this, they Where the old Bed Bath and Beyond was. Beyond. Oh, what is Champs? I'm gonna really It's a gym. It's like Planet Fitness. Oh, yeah. It's like Planet. Okay. Yeah, I would say that's their competitor. Yeah. Yeah. Because it would be a big restaurant. But <laughs> I might restaurant. look at that. I have a goofy thing again. Another goofy thing. Along 28, old 28th Street, they pick up their garbage on Friday. Oh no. Wait, on Mondays. So all these businesses put their garbages out because they leave for the weekend on Fridays. Oh. And it's just over the Where weekend. Where is this at? On Old 28th. They oh. seem to all use the same garbage. I don't know if that's anything we, we can control or just kind of like, hey, can the garbage truck come on a Friday. different day? <laughs> so the it, it doesn't, so, It's not so bad in the summer, but in the winter, the snow plows come and, oh. they mow, they, and then the critters get in. It's just, eh. oh. you know, well, if, I mean, oh. we should, I'll look into that because if we start to create walkability from Friendship yeah. Park in the village, we don't I mean, that. there's going to be people down there during the week, they, during they, the weekend. They so. leave for the weekend, so they pack all their garbage out of the street on Friday afternoon. Uh, and, yeah. and I don't blame them what else do they do unless they want to come on you know oh, yeah. it's not like they're going to pay someone extra yeah. how many yeah. hours of work to come in to get the trash out i get yeah. it but anyway okay anyway. i i agree though and and what that becomes is an important all those are important things little stuff uh okay next meeting is june 18th you'll be gone on vacation or something Hopefully, it's something fun. for a work vacation thing. Okay. I can think of the worst place in a great place. Will they have like three options by then, or is that too like, soon? June? Uh, no, I think it's going to be. be I, we don't have a date yet. Okay. In the summer, you got to staff my store first. Yeah. Or something. You got to yeah. like whip my staff into shape. You'll probably have a better at least you have a staff. Huh? I said at least you have a staff. I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> June 18th, if they're back. I'll have to check like if we have a quorum because that may have a challenge there too. Okay. 
All right. Well, it is so just a side note on that. Mm -hmm. If yeah, if anybody needs to be gone or whatever, if I can you can come in, I can be here by Zoom. Well, if you can just let Jessica know that you're not going to be able so that ahead of time, I can say, uh, we might have an issue, you know, especially if there's something that, that we today, actually, uh, yeah. yeah. So just let Jessica know. Is that okay, Jessica, if they if let me know? If it works for me to be on Zoom, I can make sure I'm on Yeah. And it, it really comes down to if there's any votes that we have yeah. to take during that meeting the critical Otherwise, vote, we'll talk because i can yeah i can come in for the critical vote real quick and then get okay. to where i need to get to right we'll have but, the we'll send out the agenda beforehand too okay prior and, to and i'm today. sorry i didn't get this agenda ahead of time and i just realized oh I is that just came in our website has been down so oh, we have had our it. emails have been down oh, if you send yeah. them to our bridal uh, email like we were having came in. I was like, why don't we have any agenda or any? It's good that you're here, Kristen. Well, I knew no, I am glad you are too because uh well, they sent the agenda, but not anything else. So whatever. No, because okay. it got we kept it, getting kicked back. So we were gonna ask you about that. Yeah, it's because our website went down. Yeah. Okay. It, well, all okay. the updates went to my husband who just deleted, deleted, deleted. Oh, oh whoops. <laughs> yeah. I I just need someone to make a motion for adjournment. Um, uh, I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion or meeting adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Uh -huh.